I'm going to present data-driven multi-level segmentation of image editing locks. Um, I'm Zipong from UBC. This work is done with uh, Leo from Adobe and my supervisor, Tamara Munson. Okay, so in a lot of professional creative tools, such as uh, Photoshop, the user, user interface is quite complex. So the user can fire lots of commands and the picture will change accordingly. They can also use layers to manage the visual objects on the screen. Typically, if an experienced user use Photoshop for 30 minutes, they can generate hundreds of commands. We think that user log segmentation can help with this complexity in the user interface. Uh, specifically, we are targeting a smart undo task, which is to chunk multiple coherent actions as opposed to a single action uh, by the normal undo. Uh, look, at this look at this example. You can actually um, group these individual, individual actions into three chunks, create shape, change the shape, and create mask for shape. Um, so let's define the segmentation problem. Suppose you have a sequence of events in a poster creation session and each event is associated with a bunch of attributes like command name, uh, the image content, the timestamp, and uh, the current active layer, uh, which is the current visual object you are operating on. Then we can chunk um, a continuous subsequence of events into the low level chunks. You can further group these low-level chunks into higher-level chunks, and then construct a hierarchical structure. There are a bunch of related work um, that has uh, deal that tries to handle the segmentation problem, but they have various different limitations. Some of them are limited to specific tasks. Um, we know that Photoshop is extremely powerful. They can allow users to do different things like portrait touching sketching, poster creation, and many more. Some of them fail to handle very complex user behaviors. Something um, Ali has mentioned some of them, uh, such as um, user can have different habits, meaning that they have different ways to, even for the same visual effect, they will make errors, they make corrections, they will make experiments. Uh, and there are a lot of um, general segmentation models that uh, ignore features specific to image editing, such as you have hierarchical clustering or some progression models. Um, one of the important specific uh, features to image editing is layer. So in this paper, we contribute a multi-level segmentation model where the low-level model is for targeting smart undo and the high level is quite flexible in terms of the granularity. And we also provide some evidence for feature, the relevance of features. So we are the first to use layer for segmentation, and we find that layer is super relevant. We also find command and duration are relevant aligned with previous work, but image content, it has no effect on the segmentation problem in contrary to the previous work. So here is a roadmap of our overall approach. Uh, instrument, compute, segment, analyze, inspect. So I will follow this order and introduce each phase one by one. So first, the instrument. We collect, um, we collect data from Photoshop experts. Um, we wrote a Photoshop uh, plugin, um, and then while the user is using Photoshop, we'll lock uh, commands, timestamps, images, and layers on fly. Uh, in total, we collected 16 sessions from 13 Photoshop experts uh, with about 30 minutes per session. Um, just take a look on the right about various different tasks um, the user is creating. Um, there are a total of 5,700 events, with about 300 events per session. Then we built this um, interface to display all the data we collected. 
such that we can manually segment uh, the sequence into chunks using the event attributes collected and the think aloud video and audio recordings. After we collect this raw data, we compute uh, the events into features. So by feature, I actually mean event similarity between two events. Um, so the intuition being that uh, if you have, if two events have larger similarity, they are, they, it's more likely for them to be in the same chunk. So I will, I will introduce the different measures for event similarities. So the first one is command similarity. From a large database of command logs, uh, we use word to whack to train a semantic vector space, or we can call it command space. And then we'll visualize, <coughs> visualize this command space on 2D uh, on the right. Uh, and we conjecture that if two commands are closer in the vector space, though uh, the two events will have larger similarity. Uh, the second measure is uh, layer similarity. We are using a rule-based approach. Uh, for example, in, in, in this one, ellip a layer ellipse one copy is the duplicate layer of ellipse one. Um, and this one shows uh, two layers of one are the adjustment layers of another. And layer sphere, layer home three, they are layers in the same group. Um, we conjecture that if two layers have stronger relationships, two events will have larger similarity. Next is image-based similarities. So you have all the snapshots of each step uh, the user did, and then you can just compute how many pixels are different between the screenshots. Um, you, can, you can conjecture that uh, if the image diff is larger, uh, events have smaller similarity. We also find uh, find out overlaps in the working regions, and conjecture that if there is a larger working region overlap, the events will have larger similarity. And finally, duration is just the difference between two timestamps, um, and we think that larger duration will imply smaller similarity. After computing these features, um, we're going to segment a sequence into chunks. So there, we are using a two-stage approach, where the stage one is to construct a low-level chunks from the events, and stage two is to group these low-level chunks into high-level chunks. So for the low level, we're actually translating the segmentation problem into a binary classification. We're trying to predict whether each event is a boundary, meaning the start of a chunk, or a non-boundary event. The data we have is 5,700 events, and we computed the features, which is the similarities between current and previous events. Um, and we used our manual segmentation as the ground truth. So we use a um, support vector machine with linear kernel, uh, pretty standard machine learning technique to do the prediction. Um, so after the training, we can plot the uh, data on this chart uh, where x axis is time, meaning the dots, each dot is an event. It lays out on the screen from left to right according to time. And the y-axis is the probability of boundary. Um, and then we can draw a threshold, meaning the dotted vertical line, such that uh, the dots, the events above this line, is categorized as boundary event, while the dots below this line is non-boundary event. When trying to decide where this threshold should be, we consider the cost for smart undo, which is our targeting task. Um, we think that the miss boundaries, the cost for miss boundaries is larger than the cost for over segmentation. So think about if you have over segmentation, um, the user will have you will need to issue multiple smart undos to reach his desired point. But if you have miss boundary, 
it's harder for the user to go back inside a chunk to find the exact point he wanted. So that means we're favoring recall over precision, and we've used the F2 metric to find a sweet, sweet spot for the threshold. After getting this low level chunks, we're actually reusing this threshold value uh, to be a granularity of segmentation. Um, we choose uh, multiple different thresholds above the lowest one, such that it can construct high level chunks. It is guaranteed that low level chunks will fall into high level chunks. Okay, so after we segment the sequence, we actually went back to analyze whether the features are useful or not. Uh, to be exact, we're looking at uh, whether each, uh, each, each feature is relevant to the segmentation. So we compute the linear coefficient in the, <coughs> in the SVM and sort it by the, their absolute values. So bigger absolute values, meaning they have bigger weight in, bigger weight in the SVM, they are, uh, mean, meaning they're more relevant. And then we also plot the distribution of each feature separated by the non-boundary and boundary. Um, so we want to compare the distribution uh, between the top distribution and bottom distribution. Um, let's look at this layer similarity example. Um, on the top distribution, you have huge difference between the two extreme values, but on the bottom, uh, they are quite balanced. And our example, in this working region overlap feature, the two distributions are quite similar, despite the different numbers. So we can see that the first three columns have different distributions, but the last two features have similar distributions. Um, based on uh, the above, uh, evidence, we conclude that uh, we can categorize these five features into three bins, most important, important, and no effect. Finally, we're going to inspect the segmentation results and compare it with the, compare it against the human labels. So this is the same chart you've seen before. Um, where x-axis is time, y-axis is prob probability of boundary in the SVM, and the red uh, rectangles are the predicted chunks. We added a gray rectangles above them, which is um, the human label chunks. What you, um, so I also label the text here. If you jump and if you zoom in a little bit, we're actually looking for the alignment of gaps. So a gap means the boundary between chunks. If the, the gaps in the gray chunks and gaps in the red chunks are aligned, meaning they have the same, uh, meaning the prediction is, is, is good. Otherwise, it's wrong. We can see that most of the gaps are aligned, but there are quite a bit of uh, over segmentation, for example, here. Uh, it, it happens quite a lot when the user is jumping back and forth on, on layers. We also use uh, this uh, interface to cross-check whether our, our prediction is good or not. Uh, to conclude, we contribute a multi-level segmentation model for image adding logs where the low level is for smart undo, the high level can be used for more use case because you get flexible for granularity, such as uh, automatic generation of tutorials or get a visual summary of the overall session. And we provide evidence for feature relevance. Uh, we found that we we're the first one to use laser layers and found that it's super relevant. Command and duration is relevant and aligned with previous work but image content has no effect in contrary to previous work. Uh, you can find more information in this uh, website. Uh, thank you.